Hello, backgammon fans. Bill Riles with my trusty cohort, Tara Mendocino. Streamers Supreme, we're here in Backgammon World Championship in Monte Carlo. This is a round four match, round of 32 in the undefeated bracket between Chris Trencher of the United States and Lawrence Powell from the UK. Two excellent players, and off we go. 5-3. Lawrence is playing the blue checkers on the bottom of the board, as you bottom of the screen as you look at it. Chris is uh, on the top playing the white. Um, now, both of these guys are excellent players. There's several times I've been here in recent years. It uh, seems as though Lawrence Powell has cashed every year. Uh, Chris Trencher... A superb American player. Uh, I know in 2018, I think it was, he lost in the Super Jackpot final here in Monte Carlo to Alfredo Unis of Brazil. So uh, this should be a, a super match. Now, as, you, uh, as we get going here, I have a live chat log iPad here in front of me so I can observe... The chat that uh, anyone contributes here. So if you have questions, suggestions, comments, just want a uh, shout out, whatever. Um, I like to make uh, these commentated matches an interactive affair. So uh, feel free to do so. I'll uh, try to respond as appropriate to to any uh, you know any uh, comments, questions. So anyway, here we are underway. Chris rolls a 4-6, has to come in and play to the bar. 5-4 by Lawrence. Going to hit slotting on the 4. A6 for Chris. And he comes in, and then it's just a question of what six. He probably doesn't want to strip the mid. He might not want to step out into the advancing infantry here. Uh, so perhaps he plays to the ace or the deuce. It's an early uh, decision. Ah, RF is is in the room. There it is. Now he sh RF should be quite familiar with uh, Lawrence's game, I'm sure. So uh, Chris lets that one go. One zero Lawrence. Now this is a 17 point match, so it's a bit of a a marathon and a test not only of your back backgammon skills and acumen. But also of your uh, endurance in certain regards. Uh, a lot of focus, a lot of uh, concentration, and you know you're sitting in one spot for uh, two, maybe as long as three hours. So it can get uh, it can get uh, tiring, and even a physical regard. I need to have this on my left. If that's, no, it's if that's okay. okay. I just don't want to interrupt. No, no, no. no you're not doing anything. The game is over. The game is over. We're between okay. games. If you could just hand me the phone. Okay. You want it on the board? Okay. Maybe I should know, but I'm not familiar with exactly who Backgammon London is, but I certainly appreciate the compliments. Well, I mean, it's up to you. I, I, no, no, I'm not trying to take a okay. six. Okay, what is this? They want Tara to perhaps reposition the clock and the scoreboard to their more to their liking, which uh, Andrew Selby, yes, that's right. I should have known that. Andrew, good to see you. I just put it back to 34. You'll be 
forming part of the uh, Lawrence uh, band club here. Thank you very much. A 380 take, says Reese. So uh, not going to be a, an early positive in Chris's uh, PR calculations. But, uh, okay, so they got to <laughs> move the scoreboard from one end to the other, but uh, they want to keep the score the same. So uh, Okay, 5-4. Deuces is going to hit and make the four point. So a nice, uh, nice roll. They're over starting on stream one. Nick Blazer's commentating a consolation match, 11 pointer between uh, Pekko Kostadinov, two time finalist in the world championship, and Mick Larson of uh, Denmark, who's a superb player. So that should be an uh, entertaining and exciting match as well. So we got two great matches going here tonight. We don't have the, we only have the live XG transcription on stream one, not on stream two. So uh, you'll have to, to make do. Our Reese says uh, he's transcribing. That'll be, uh, that'll be good. Chris sends the early cube and uh, Lawrence takes that. Chris makes the five point. So nice, uh, nice roll following his uh, his cube. Lawrence is going to take the five point, still leaves that extra checker exposed out there. It's going to be exposed in whatever manner that or another checker. He was going to be leaving a blot in any event. Aces for Chris. All he can do is pretty much slot the bar and make the 21 point. We thank Chris for uh, we're transcribing here. We, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, and we've had a number of more people join us since I did. I, I do have access to the uh, to the chat line here, so I'm monitoring that. Hello to Ian. He's just uh, showed up. Um, so anyway, I'm following this. I welcome questions, comments, suggestions. Uh, if anybody's like Reese is transcribing, or if anybody's putting in uh, specific positions and wants to contribute that information to the group, uh, certainly that's welcome as well. So uh, we're looking at a, a very good match here. Yeah, I thought uh, Ian might be on the uh, Chris fan club. He's taken some lessons from Chris. They broomed together a couple of times at tournaments. They're good friends. And of course, we we have the Arif Alipur has uh, is in the room, and I'm certain uh, rooting for his countrymen on the opposite side of the table. So uh, should be a good one. This is a uh, these guys are undefeated. So uh, in the round of 32, so the winner advances to the round of 16 undefeated. Double threes will now. This will be an interesting uh, decision. He can, you know, make the uh, make the bar point and have a five prime with Lawrence offset from it, which is what he chooses. He could have uh, split the baby in some fashion and come out from the uh, from the twenty one to the to the eighteen. I, I kind of personally like the the play that Chris made. Okay, now. Oof. Chris got to make a break at some point, and now's the time. Lawrence only has a three point board, and he has a uh, lot in his home board, but the 6 5, now he could uh, make the deuce and hit loose. I suspect he chooses not to do that with two already offset behind a five prime. 6-4 by uh, Chris, so I think he uh, flees with the back man and uh, hopes to uh, have the guy on the uh, 13 not be hit. 
four five, so that worked to his liking. With uh, Lawrence holding a two cube here, so this has a fair amount of potential for. Uh, now Lawrence is playing on down, and that way he's he's going to try to uh, not only ultimately build his board, but also by uh, not burning pips inside, he's going to try to reduce the chances of getting gammoned if this uh, continues to go south on him. Justin Noel looking for bets. Uh, Ian's always a a better. I guess Ian got that file I sent him overnight, uh, and y'all have settled up there. What did y'all run it at a higher uh, standard? And uh, did Victor win the PR, uh, although he lost the game or lost the match? Okay, two one for Chris. And he's gonna. He wants to play this so that he. He can play sixes and fives uh, sets uh, safely. Ace, deuce. I don't think. Uh, yeah, he's going to play to the six. He has no interest in splitting the back at this moment in in the face of this uh, attack. Four one. Okay. Get a bet going on this. If you do get a bet, I'll be happy to forward the, uh, the match files to one or both of you uh, after the fact here. Okay. Uh, Lawrence hasn't crunched too bad yet. Chris has probably still yet got a, you know, a roll or two to uh, to play that Lawrence may. Well, crack further on. Now he gets a six and has to leave while Chris still has four builders. So this could. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Petco and Mick are on stream one uh, with the live XG feed, uh, Justin. So you, uh, you want to watch that one? Well, you can open both windows. Watch them both if you want. Um. Nick's commentating on uh, Mick and Petco. Fairly straightforward. Uh, Lawrence is having a little trouble getting in. So Chris is, uh, he doesn't really accomplish anything, so he may as well move it to the two. So he's, uh, there he gets in. So the chance of the gammon just decreased significantly. Just increased significantly. Is that what I said? I, I, Gary O is in the house. Oh, uh, I don't know, Justin, uh, and I should have and didn't look at the uh, bookmaker sheets to see who the favorite among these two actually is from a betting perspective. They're making book, uh, which is updated each round. Now, I didn't see it but uh, before this, but uh, before round three, the earlier round this morning, the betting favorite was... Uh, Sander at 13 to 1, Mochi was at 14 to 1, Wilcox at 19 to 1, Ryan Rabello, who had already played his round three match at that time, so at the at that point in time he was around ahead. He was 21 to 1, and then a number of people, including I think uh, Roy Set, Lund, Brettel. I can't. I've always said Bredal. Tar tells me it's Brettel. Um, O'Hagan and others were uh, all at 24 to 1. And those odds will have changed a bit since uh, since the conclusion of round uh, round three. Large Pal is uh, an excellent player, and like I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this, I, I've been to Monte Carlo six or seven times, including four or five in the last six or eight years. And it seems like Lawrence Pal has always cashed, so he's very consistent. He's a very competent player. Double threes. 
Okay, he makes the five. Okay. Six four by uh, Chris. Now he makes the deuce point. Now, as, as I, I know Chris's game uh, better than I know Lawrence's game, but um, Chris generally pay, plays at a relative, fairly, let's say, fairly brisk pace. He certainly can be deliberate when it's uh, necessary. Um, I've watched Lawrence play some in the past, but it's been several years pre-pandemic, so I'm a, I don't specifically recall. Maybe uh, Andrew Selby can uh, can clear it. Uh, I'm of the mind that uh, Lawrence may be a bit more deliberate player than Chris, but uh, again, Chris uh, will be deliberate uh, when necessary on difficult decisions, but otherwise play a relatively brisk pace. There's a 2-6 from the bar. It's almost a forced move. Ace three, he can hit. Probably will. In absence of any better threes, anyway. I'm being transcribed here, but I can, uh, or Reese is transcribing it. If he keeps up and so forth, I'll uh, happily forward the match file. Uh, no, I won't have the match file on this one. You'll have the video. You can record it, transcribe it yourselves. <laughs> I will have uh, access to the uh, Petco MIC transcription file. Okay, 3-1 for Chris. I'll admit to reading the chat line and having a few distractions, so I didn't know if he had played any of the 3-1. But now I see that he had not at that point, and I'm back in, uh, back in tune here. Four or five hits. Three two, so that's the anchor, and then two of his choice. Okay. Two one for Lawrence. He's going to take that advanced anchor here. Or three. Five, six, got to run. He doesn't have another viable six. Four, two. Now, this is a bit interesting. He's, he's going to hit, but then it's a question of what he does with a four. He could uh, hit and make the nine point, leaving a shot on the 11 and the 13, but I don't think he's... Uh, wild about doing that but he is going to do that or he's going to consider doing that he as i say you can just look at his facial expression and see how uh not excited he is with that play okay so he decides not to hit it uh doesn't want to give up the mid 
Okay, so one of them's coming to the eight, probably to the maybe on to the two. Yeah. Okay. Six one. Chris is probably gonna just play two from the nine here. Now, does Chris safety the nine point or make the point? He makes the point. Offers the shot, but uh, Lawrence would have to give up the anchor to, to take the shot, although Lawrence is in a rather commanding position, both structurally and uh, pip count wise. But uh, before too long, Lawrence will. Uh, We'll have to give up that anchor one way or another, and he'll want to do it before Chris's board improves much. Okay, so you can see both of them, Chris and... Uh, well, Lawrence has a, a spare on the eight, but he's otherwise stripped on his back two points. Chris is stripped on everything right now. So not a lot of flexibility in play by either. Okay, Chris is gonna gonna play it. Lawrence has got a bit of work ahead of him to uh, to bring these around. Although he's, uh, you know. He's got a better board. Chris hasn't got much work done over there, so uh, let's see. 5-2. Not, uh, not at all constructive roll. Chris is getting uh, had a couple of uh, difficult decisions in this uh, third match, or third game of the match. So uh, it's requiring him a bit of uh, expenditure of a bit of time to evaluate his options. And he says holding a, uh, holding a four cube while doing so. Is that, is that a Suki in the house? Okay, so Chris gonna come to the eleven and hit the hit the blot, I think. Okay, so now Barnes uh there's a nice five the hard way. Two four so he hits and then he's just gonna play to the bar, I presume. Lawrence, another opportunity. He'd like to make the five point, but he comes in and able to hit the blot on the on the seven. Three, two. Ah, uh, he can make the two point, and then uh, I guess he's just gonna play to the fifteen. Huh? A lot of blots, but he'll have the double anchor. Doesn't mind. Well, he's going to play it this way. Okay. Four, six. Just got to run. Six, two for Chris. I guess we're just going to have to run from the... Oh, well, he's going to hit there. Doesn't have much structure, and he's throwing a lot of blots around. There's a double hit. Which way does he double hit? I think he hits on the bar, but uh, let us see. Gary Jones, they're not a backgammon uh, 
hierarchy. We just thought that uh, the uh, Echo Mick Larson match would probably have a wider range of interest to a wider number of viewers. Um, so it's a rather arbitrary choice. Now that they're both live streamed, uh, you know, earlier in the week uh, we were delaying the stream replay of the uh, stream too. But now that they're both live streamed, it, it doesn't particularly matter other than the fact that stream one has a uh, live XG transcription. Okay, so uh, Trencher is in uh, serious danger of uh, losing his 4-1 lead. And in fact, with uh, seven back, there is the, there's some uh, rare Bee Gees floating around in the realm as well. That codes on stream one, GL. So, uh, two, six, two. Uh, he wants to maybe be careful of the of the sixes, perhaps, but he uh, doesn't want to stack them either. Six four four and a six uh, Mr. Ani is back in the house. Hey Ed, what's happening? That's true, Justin Noel. Chris is a very strong player. Probably a little just my observation, uh, maybe a little less consistent than other elite players. Um, but like you say, when when he's on, he's on. Or or in a game where the roles and the developments, uh, you know, allow a comparatively easy game, he can put up some low numbers. Um, but where a Mochi or a Sander or maybe a Victor and others, you know, can put up twos and threes consistently, Chris uh, maybe is not quite as consistent, but certainly capable. I don't have the stream one in front of me, so if they're over five PRs at the moment, that's early in a long, well, an 11 point match. Uh, rest assured, there in all likelihood will uh, come down considerably from that. Okay, there's the shot. Six four. Chris would like a one. He does not get a one. So now uh, there are some. Uh, there are some Bee Gees in the house. He's got five crossovers and uh, Lawrence has six. There he can only realize two. Actually, he could get three. He could get three, but he plays it this way. Lawrence gets that. So Lawrence is likely to have a shake for the Bee Gee. Now, he, he, he could have saved that if he gets BG'd right here. He does not. So, uh, I don't know, Ian or Arif or Andrew or Justin, uh, I thought Chris might have played that double two differently. He, he uh, gave up a... Or gave a chance to be BG there with a a double. He could have uh, got him out prior to that if if he'd have played it the other way. Mm 
Okay, six two. Okay, five point he could make, but he's going to opt for the for the eighteen. I think with it split back checkers, I would personally make the the five, but uh, Lawrence is a more accomplished player than I am, so I'll defer to him. You know, it's, it's interesting, and I know that Nick knows this, but I meant to just mention to him to be sure and comment on the on the stream of the. Uh, Stream one, Petco and uh, and Mick Larson. That even has the added pressure here. These guys are both undefeated, and whoever loses goes into the uh, second chance, and uh, you know still has a chance to win the tournament. In the Petco Mick match, the loser loses any chance of uh, winning the tournament. So uh, perhaps a little bit more pressure and intensity on stream one than there is on stream two. Not that these guys uh, have any interest in losing. Six four. Now they rolls aces. So again, we get into this kind of a standoff with both of them stripped. So uh, who who blinks first? Thank you, Tara. Okay, so Chris having given up the six point and uh, Lawrence. Uh, and with a racing advantage, a structural advantage, Chris is going to let it go. So there it is, 6-4. I'm with. I, I don't know exactly what GL is his point with that is, but I think Chris m misplayed the two-two, but. Uh, Chris is a hell of a lot better player than I am, so uh, if he misplayed, I think it was an oversight and not uh, not necessarily a, an error. With the sequence that played, Ian, he would have um, beat the chance to to be BG'd if he'd have played the double two differently. But. That's the way to do it, Mr. Uh, Mr. Noel is multitasking by watching both streams. You can open two windows and watch them both. I'm sure most everyone would know that, but... Uh, I think you're probably right, GL. I, I have to think Justin has one or the other uh, sounds muted. Dancing. Okay, so now Chris is uh, briefly contemplated, but uh, decides not to do anything. Now 
If Lawrence were to dance again, he does not. Is Chris any more inclined to uh, to do something with the cube here? Two pips down, long match, 6-4 Lawrence. I don't think Chris uh, has any need to do anything rash. He decides it's to roll on. Now he's going to, he wants to step up. I think he plays to the five and steps up. He could hit loose, but I, I would step up. You want to get that guy out of there if you can. Well, thank you, Jesper. But, you know, we all have our style. Uh, Nick's uh, definitely a better player, better technical announcer, but it's it's pretty much strictly backgammon. Um, you know, I try to mix it up a little bit, give a little insight that might help less experienced players and newbies that uh, might be watching and keep it a little bit entertaining with some, uh, you know, personal info about the players or my knowledge of the players or anecdotes here and there engage with the chat line um you know so i i enjoy that and i hope uh, many of our viewers do uh nick has a different style and like i say that's that's great uh, i know many people want to watch backgammon to uh, hear backgammon so uh Anyway, Nick's or Nick, Chris is obviously too good here. He's just going to play on for the single game G. Now you got to be careful to, you know, be careful of the sixes. And I don't guess maybe he can play this anyway, but, you know, you don't want to necessarily be. Uh, Roll a set that's going to make you blot into that uh, into that void on four. Okay, so again, and interesting. Chris doesn't want to to stack necessarily. Now this is I don't like this. This is double blotting with a double six. So uh, let's reconsider this one. He, he's probably going to play five and five and six, perhaps. Well, Justin, you should have your yourself over here, and I'd have put you in the chair. Okay, now Chris is going to be attacking this. There it is. Boom. So again, a very probably, well, I say that just as he rolls. Just as... Uh, you know, he had great hopes of doing something special. He rolls a set of fours. It's not that great, but that's to break the four point early. Doesn't have to, but he did. Probably a G. A few rare losses floating around. A few rare BGs floating around. Okay, so now 19, 11. Got to take it off the ace to keep himself even. Uh, he figures he's got the G anyway. He's not going to get that greedy. Okay, so I say the BGs are out. The, the rare loss are still in play. That's out. So it's going to be a gammon. 
So six up, 11 point match. Slowly building up the viewers here. We're up to 86 on stream two. I imagine, uh, at least in the short term, and and it's a shorter match, so maybe they finish before this one does. But I suspect Petco and Mick are sucking up much of the much of the audience early on. Get all the uh, Europeans and and others uh, watching that match. Although a number of the Americans should pick up Petco as well, but. Uh, here we go. Yeah, I don't see any likes on this thing. You got to smash that like button, as Mark Olson would say. Makes it uh, backgammon and better in the uh, search engine algorithms. It makes uh, Galaxy status better in the YouTube world. So uh, smash it while you have the opportunity. I guess I need to, mine's showing zero. I guess I need to refresh it occasionally, but I'm not going to disrupt my viewing pleasure to do so. Boom. Yeah, we've been up as high as... Uh, Yesterday, we on the stream one match was it was the only live stream match. Yesterday, we were over 500 on a couple of matches. Today, the early match, yeah, I didn't see it, but I know the uh, the Jonah uh, John Rosette match. We hit close to 300 on that one. Well, you got to hopefully we get more likes. You got to remind them. Okay, thank you, GL, for the update. Okay. Nice. Five, two... Now, does he step up into this? Yes. Five, four. So I guess he's going to play to the eight and the 20. Take the forward anchor. Yeah. Good run, but I, I think he'll go to the eight. Give himself another builder working on the bar point. Okay. Here again now. Earlier, I thought Lawrence a uh, game back or two would have made a, a a pointing play like this, and he chose to make the. The 18, this time he does take the pointing play. Is that the voice of experience, GL? Okay, nice set of fours, making a couple of points. It is a extremely volatile position, as uh, Justin pointed out. So now Chris can uh, increase the volatil volatility even more, and does.
I say he does. He's perhaps having misgivings about that. And the only other things with the ace is the safety on the eight, and that's what he chooses to do. Aces for Lawrence. That's two, and then to the bar. Three, one. Now uh, he could hit them both. But uh, Lawrence has a pretty formidable board over here. He does something that always be said to two in the air. Okay, so now Chris is a favorite to cover that blot. Not exactly the way he wants it, but he's going to play two off the eight in all likelihood, making the point and hitting the blot. Scott Johnson is back in the house, Say Scott. He was watching some of uh, Jonah and John Rosette's match earlier. There it is. You did it earlier, you may as well do it again. Okay, so now again, he's a favorite to make the blot. There it is. Didn't really have any options. He's gonna make it, and he's gonna play to the seven. No choice. Okay, so now, what does Chris do? We wish you were here too, Jesper. You know, it, uh, Arda probably wished you were here earlier in the week. It didn't look, uh, Gokhan wasn't able to get a visa until as it ends up the very last moment. So Gokhan didn't get here until Tuesday midday. So we missed all the Monte Carlo Open and some of the early stuff. And uh, Arda's staff was stretched pretty thin. But uh, Gokhan's kind of like you, Jesper, can do the work of two or three people. So uh, sure, Arda's breathing a, a lot easier with Gokhan here. Okay, so uh, Chris uh, recognizes some pretty serious potential here. Sends it across, and Lawrence says, uh, I'm not going to pay to watch this game. Yeah, that's true, Scott. Uh, John was was rolling well. I talked to Jonah after the game a bit, and he, he felt pretty confident that, uh, you know, he thought John, of course, played well, but uh, Jonah actually thought that he perhaps outplayed him, but uh, I think just uh, Jonah couldn't get a break, and... Uh, had that one that was one game that was an eight or ten point swing on the one game, and uh, that hurts. No. Naked ladies are back in the house. Tara's not in the production room right now. She is a credentialed. Uh, Galaxy YouTube channel, and I think it is. Uh, well, this one's chat. It's a subscription thing, but they're still sneaking in here. I don't know how they do that. I don't worry about it. I just uh, don't pay any attention to them. Okay, so Chris. Going to make the five. Two six, so keeps it going. <laughs> Is that a, a gig at some JN that we might know? I didn't know that was his case. 
Okay, Chris really ought to try to make a point here. There's a two and a six to come out. Okay, Jasper, sleep well, my friend. Okay, 6-1 for Chris. Little Wilbur is uh, frozen here. So we're going to have to play it this way. Chris can play this. Set a set of sixes, just take it to the one, I guess. Doesn't want to play behind him, wants to stay in front of him, so uh, dupes the A's. Okay, now Lawrence would uh, like to make that five point. That's not going to do it. That's, uh, geez, what is it? Three to the three. Um, I suspect. It might even be the antithesis of the best, Justin. Okay, five one. So Chris is. Uh, I guess he's going to play two off the six here. Not that he's excited about doing it, but uh, I'm just uh, reading the chat line here and watching the thing, so uh, I know they're on a break. I can see them going in and out here. So, Justin, give me an update on that uh, Petco mix match, if you would. 3-3 three, three, dance. Now, if uh, deuces, whoa, what a roll that is. Now, if uh, Larch can only get a, a 6 or a 1X, I know they're on break. I was wanting to know the score. Yeah, that was a, uh, that's what you call a super joker, isn't it? Wow, gonna have to. Uh, I don't know. I step up. I step up. Jesus Christ. Echo four five. Okay, yeah, you gotta step up. You have to leave him the indirect, but you gotta step up. Five three. So now he has. He's a favorite to get out. He is out. Uh, and go ahead and lift. Takes away the two five. You know, actually, I realize now it's interesting it because, and it, I've really noted it this afternoon in the Jonah genre of set match. I'm watching a real stream, real real time. Y'all are watching the stream, which is three, four, five seconds delayed. So uh, occasionally, I may uh, see and say something before you do. Three, two. Do what? Talk to me.
Tar is correcting me. It's a much longer delay than than uh, three seconds. So it's uh, I just spoke of Gokan, and there is Gokan, you know. Okay, where was I? Okay. Now, got to play that way. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Let's see. That that's my play. Get it get it moving. Don't burn that many pips. And uh as I say, he inserted a million times. Where's there where there's a gap, there's hope. So uh Chris has got some hope. Now he's got even more hope. Nothing better than a gap than a double gap. Okay. Chris, um, I'm playing to the four and the six. Personally, it burns a few pips, but he's thinking about, I guess, perhaps uh, lit in the back, but... Uh, Maybe my uh, cohorts in the chat line can hear their insights there. Does he split it? Five, three, nice shake. So uh, Chris has got to go to the whip now. Get this thoroughbred across the uh, across the bar before uh, Lawrence can get his off the board. Wow, I think you stay. Uh oh, rooting for an ace. Chris is gets the ace, gets the four. Look out! Can't fool around. There's nothing to go fishing for. So how many has he got off? Eight, nine off? Three, six, nine off? So uh, Chris is just going to have to play this one out for a while. Okay, six three is now nah, he's gonna play to the. Well, I don't know. What do you do with that? I maybe play to the three, keep four builders active and even on the back on the end. He's even on the end, but only three builders active. So let's see what happens. Six two. Justin agrees with the slot. There's a two, but many returns. Uh, ouch. That was a rather resolute slap of that block plunger after that double ace. Okay. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay, just plays by him. So, uh, single game, two points, eight, seven, uh, Lawrence. 
Yeah, Chris is uh, this player cam is neat because Chris does uh, usher up some pretty good facial expressions on occasion. It's just the way it's angled. Uh, Lars isn't quite uh, in the screen as much. We're going on break. Certainly better than a G. Yeah, that double ace was brutal, wasn't it, Jill? Well, so, uh, eight, seven. So where are we? We're slowly climbing up the viewer list. We're up to 125. Be sure and pop that like button while you're here. Uh, Lawrence four eight Chris seven eighty five and that's that's really high for Chris. He's not going to be at all happy with that. But I, I think a large portion of that was that for cube in the first game. Is that a statement or a question mark? Ah, oh, there's the question mark. Now, it's interesting, of course, 17-point match, they both started with 34 minutes, so, you know, they have tons of time, it's not a thing, but, you know, I would have, uh, for no good reason than my own intuition or a little bit of experience, a little bit of perception, I guess, I thought Chris would have been the um, more briskly paced player than, uh, than Lawrence, uh, yet Chris has used 11 minutes and Lawrence has used, mm, what's that? A little over six. So, uh, you know, part of that's the, whether you're getting difficult roles or not, just the development of the game, who has the, uh, tough decisions. But, uh, Chris has used about twice as much time as, uh, as Lawrence has. Hey, not only yourself and Chris, Justin, I've. Uh, I'll put myself in that boat as well. Okay. Apparently, uh, Herb, Roman, <laughs> Herb Roman built the boat, Ian. But, uh, okay. As y'all can see, uh, and, it, and it's really worked out quite nicely. Um, our streaming, well, she switches to another view and that's okay. Uh, here you can see the playing room behind me. Here comes Mark Olson strolling up behind me. Where's he going? He's just closing up a board and moving it somewhere for some reason. Mark Olson, CEO of Bag M and Galaxy. But, um, you know, you can see here, it's quite a extensive, uh, ballroom i had it originally i'd laid it out and uh, we could have accommodated up to about four 400 players in this configuration the uh as you can see to the left of the screen over my right shoulder kind of funny looking at yourself on there. but there is a uh viewing area over there with the uh, Stream one is is projected onto a large projection screen. It has a speaker, so the uh, commentary is played to the theater seating area, and uh, quite a number of people sit over there. So uh, that's that's become a real. Uh, point of interest people there tara is rotating the camera so that you can see it somewhat there's nick and he's looking at a monitor on that uh table in front of him which has the xg feed and all and then you can see the big projection screen and the theater seating area now still yet you know we're relatively early in the match so or early in the tournament so most players are uh still active at this point so early at this 10 o'clock uh, start time you don't see many people in the sitting area but uh 
couple of times uh, yesterday, that area was standing room only over there. We are live, Guy Asamide. Uh, what is this? Those uh, those hookers are online, but there are uh, a considerable number of hookers uh, within the hotel, and uh, certainly a lot of eye candy, if nothing else, for some of us. Guy Ansimov, we are live. Bill Riles here commentating, and I am monitoring the chat line. So if you got questions, comments, suggestions, just want your name shouted out on the uh, on the stream, let me know. I think uh, there's a little bit of everything, George. Uh, you see the Latinas, you see some uh, Eastern Europeans, Russians, uh, Africans. I don't know. See them from everywhere. And, uh, yeah, Snelling survived a really tough match in round three. It's interesting because he, uh, he's had a tough draw. Some of them, you know, the, the, a lot of it depends on the draw. Um, just contrast. Will, uh, Wilcox Snellings was in the anti buy section, so he didn't get a buy. And he drew Ellie Roymey. Then he had to play Victor Askenazi. And then after that, this afternoon, he had to play uh, Antonio Scambato, who, while not the elite player that Roymey or Askenazi is, he's certainly a capable player. Scambato led the entire match, and then uh, Snellings won it at DMP to advance to the fourth round. Um, contrast that against Ryan Ribello, who's a great young player. He got a bye, and then he played uh, two very comparatively, uh, well, let's say, inexperienced, less skilled players in the second and third round. So, I mean, he's just had a cakewalk. Snelling, you know, has had uh, just an incredibly difficult draw. Uh, yeah, Scott, Snelling's Askenazi was unbelievable last night. So... Uh, Okay, our, our boys are back in place. I was going to comment just before they took the break. You can see the the two stream matches are being played in a private room, so it's nice and quiet. They can't hear anything. The back door is cracked open with a chair a little bit just to get a little better air circulation in there. It tends to heat up. Uh, perhaps I think the air conditioning isn't that great in that room, plus we've got a lot of electrical equipment generating heat. But... Uh, I'm not sure that that third match would be played beginning at 10 tonight, Ian. Um, so I'm busy here. I haven't checked the uh, haven't checked any brackets. The lady came in second in uh, Vegas. Yeah, Kate Elmore. She is not here. And there's a, a bit of steam. Occasionally, Gary O, you are correct. I'm sorry? Yeah, you can scroll down on your YouTube, on your phone or whatever you're watching. You can scroll, scroll down below the picture to the information uh, part. Uh, and it gives all the links to the various brackets and so forth. So if you are not aware of that, you can can go to those links and catch up on everything that's going on. So uh, just scroll down a, a bit, uh, guy Anisimov, and you'll find the in, the links to the brackets. Now here we are. Chris has got. Uh, Hmm, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I've sent a cube to uh, Lawrence, and from my perspective, I got to think Lawrence is going to play this, but he drops it. Okay. 8-8. Eight, eight. Down to a uh, nine-point match. 
five, four. Ace is for Chris. That always plays well in that uh, position. Two, one. He'll take the anchor. Okay, now he's going to step up, right? So Chris has accomplished a fair amount, and Lawrence hasn't been able to do anything as of yet. Now he's going to have to make the two-point, which is not necessarily what he wants to be, but it does unstack the six and eight somewhat and make a point, so not all bad. Lawrence going to hit and split. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, A6 comes in, and then uh, what six does he play? He can come out, or he can go to the bar point. Bar point it is. Six, four, that. Comes out and makes the point. Look out. Sixes will work. Now, what does he do? Does he make the deuce point? Does he make the ace point? Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to make the ace point, personally. I like to unstack him, but Chris is going to go otherwise, put him in the air. Three, six, he's out, points. George, the current match scores are not updated in real time in any fashion. I mean, that would be incredibly labor-intensive. So uh, pretty much just um, have to wait and see updates to the brackets. Now, Julie Tabot on Artist Staff is uh, continually updating the brackets as matches finish. Nothing like a smart ass like GL, huh? Over there where the 8-8 eight, eight is, is where you see the current score of this match. <laughs> okay, so where do we go from here? Chris is counting this, counting this exercise. It is now 11.09 p.m. in uh, Monte Carlo. This match actually started at 10 p.m. Now, they... They don't post any scores, and in fact, even when Julie updates uh, the bracket, she'll she doesn't put in scores. You'll just, and that's why they all show up as seventeen zero eleven zero or whatever the match length was. But they're not inputting the actual match scores. We know what you meant, George. GL was just having a little fun with you. Don't you know how to count? Eight times six, 47, 51, 32 is 83, and 39 is 122 for blue. White sitting at 54, 56, 60, 80, 90, 106. So what's that? 122, 106, 16 pips. Very good, Justin. Now you... <laughs> I like to do both, Gary Olson. Well, it's round of 32, so there will be 16 after this round in the undefeated bracket. Now, as I explained a bit earlier, perhaps some of you tuned in after this conversation. 
the uh, unlike prior years, this is not a true double elimination this year. When the um, undefeated bracket winner and the second chance bracket winner come together and play, it's a single 21 point match. Now the uh, and that's just so that you can define for viewing purposes and promotional purposes a final match instead of a first final or final final match. So it's a final the not a the final match. But has anyone run this cube? Um, I guess Justin says passed by zero five eight. So I, I guess he's talking about this cube. Um, Bill uses kind of a combination of cluster and just fast math, fast math. But anyway, uh, so it'll be a single match final, but the, in recognition of the fact of, uh, one person winning the, uh, undefeated bracket, that person gets a, uh, $8,000 award for winning that so he's got eight thousand in his pocket going into that uh, single single match final and i'm sure you're right ian i wasn't privy to that but uh, that would be the natural way to do it and uh, maybe in conjunction with that eight thousand euro of bonus uh, that the undefeated Winner gets okay, so uh, it's a bit of a pass apparently, but uh, Lawrence took it and we're playing it. And uh, Chris hasn't had a lot of luck in clearing those two points just yet, although Lawrence is. Uh, they're both stri stripped in the outfield, so let's see who blinks, blinks first. Trenchers from New York City. Six two. So does he? Play him off the 10, or does he play inside? Okay. So now Lawrence has probably got to break something as well, and he does. So we still have our little standoff uh, scenario here. 6-3 by Chris. Just going to have to, I don't know, what am I playing to? Ace and deuce or something? That's right. Anybody can win in Atlanta. The proven fact. So he's uh, contemplating paying now. He's got uh, two blots in Lawrence's home board, and this dupes the ace, although they're, you know, deuces, fours, and sixes uh, cover in varying respects. Six, ace and deuce, that's what I thought would be the appropriate play. Five, one, so there's a, uh, Lawrence has a much better board. Another six, three for Chris. And uh, Lawrence has a much better board than he had last time, so Chris, uh, I don't think he can... He can consider leaving it. He's, but Lawrence can probably sustain another role. Well, he can sustain that role. So uh, what else we got here? We got Jeff Proctor in the house. He knows who. He knows that anyone can win in Atlanta. If anyone does, Felix has joined us. Hey, Felix, what's happening? Checking in on his homeboy, Mr. Trencher here. 
So, uh, where are we? What's the count in this thing? I don't think... Uh, Lawrence can't get risky just yet, I don't think. So, uh, we need to see another couple of rolls. There you go. I like that, Andrew. Good way to say it. Deuces. That's three checkers off. Now it's coming, I think. Two checkers advantage off. Some number of pips ahead. That's 42 on the blue side. Okay, 42 on the blue side and one, uh, two, 40 on the, on the white side. Is that right? Checker on the, yeah, it's, it's 42 and 40. Yeah. So, uh, despite the two checker advantage, Lawrence has a gap on the two and he's, uh, two pips behind. So I don't, I don't think he can, uh, he can do anything here. Justin says redouble take. I think it's, it's obviously a take from my perspective. I'm not certain of the redouble. I think if he redoubles, which I'm not confident that it is, it's a snap take for Chris. Okay, so a uh, key moment likely in this match here, particularly if Chris takes. There he's, I, I thought he would take that. Be interesting to see. Again, I didn't, I didn't think Lawrence would have cubed him, but thought it was a fairly easy take for Chris. But uh, he's got to do more than uh, play tit for tat. Double three. Ace, deuce. So, uh, five, three, stepping forward. So he's down to six checkers. Chris has got to have a set. And a set sometime soon. And it might ought to be fairly large. Big numbers, so six. Now, Chris needs a miss out of Lawrence. He doesn't get it, so that's that's that. 12-8. I might... I might go with that, Boris. Boris Dektiar in the house watching his New York boy. Hello, Boris. Good to see you. Why are they playing on travel boards? Um, not exactly a travel board. It's not, it's not a Jeffrey Parker tournament size board, but it's a reasonably sized board. Okay. Now yeah, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's this is uh, you know Lawrence hopes something happens in a hurry so nobody sees these two stacks he's got going here. Hurry up and change it so nobody sees it. Four one and. He got he do, he can't stack any higher. He's got to do something like this. Aces is it? Yeah, and the the mid. Now Chris trailing twelve eight. 
unless something dramatic happens here. We're, we're seeing a cube right here. I have to think. Probably going to be, I think it's going to be a double pass, but let's see. Double and a pass, so 12-9. Now over on stream one, if y'all look at that, they have the, uh, what they call, they're all Galaxy equipment. They have the uh, Grand Prix Monte Carlo board. I, it's, uh, I think the, the winner gets one. It's for sale here. I think it's 1050 euros, if I recall correctly. And uh, nice, colorful board. Um, I mean, look at that over on uh, stream one, if you wish. <laughs> you think we ought to perform a little, uh, put a little magic on that cube, Justin? Tara's responding there. She's attuned to all things glary. So, uh, now, what's he do with his 2-3? Plenty of 2s and not a lot of 3s. Uh, hmm. I'm, I'm, oh, two, three, you're going to stack them like that, huh? Absolutely, uh, Justin. And these tournament boards, these, as is being played on here, you can actually uh, buy them here at the end of the tournament. You, I think they're, you can buy them for 300 euros. Um, I don't know what they, uh, sell for in the uh, sell on their website as an example dancing double four okay so double sixes that's the deuce point the ace point maybe yeah there you go now gonna be an interesting decision for Chris if Lawrence dances that's not a dance so perhaps it's a bit more of an interesting decision for Chris. <laughs> and Justin knows him well. interesting how uh, you know so often I mentioned this yesterday on stream and and obviously there's great cases where doubles doublets play uh, superbly seems like there's more times though where it'd be easier to play if you had uh, you know you got to play three of them or five of them but it's kind of like 90 foot baits pass it seems to be just a, a perfect design Yeah, the, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix board or whatever they call it is what is on stream one. And, and that's what I recalled was 1050. Uh, there's a sign over here. They've got a shop set up in the uh, 
in the venue selling all types of boards, um, dice, cubes, books, um, their dice tower, their scoreboards, their clock cradle, well, I forget what, Tempest, is that it or something? Uh, so there's a lot of things uh, available over there. Wow. Two point board, two in the air, and you dance. This could get expensive. Like I said on that huge swing game that Jonah lost yesterday, well, he had lost a four point game prior to that, and I said, that's going to leave a scar. And uh, then he outdid himself. And, uh, man, he's going to be, after that big swing game, he's going to have scars, bruises, and uh, all kinds of things after that. Okay, 3 1. So pick and pass. Only thing Chris has going for him on this game is that the cube's in the middle. Man. 5 1. So he's at least got an, one anchor. <laughs> I like that, Justin. Don't, don't look at the. Dice, just look at the faces. Huh? Chris has kind of this disbelieving smirk on his face right now. Like, where the hell did that come from? Well, you could make the deuce, Justin, and that may that would be my just initial gut reaction. But the lo longer I look at it, uh, perhaps you make the eight and slot on the deuce. Uh, okay, he's going to go ahead and make the more obvious play. Ace deuce. Now, what's he do with this? Go six four, I guess. Well, I got it. Okay, just playing with one blot rather than uh, two or three. A6, so that's a force play. There's the current board. Okay, it's $400 on the website. I, I'm thinking Mark told me they were selling the what will be the used uh, tournament boards here on the uh, at the tournament for 300. You get a 25% discount if I recall correctly. I'll give uh, some great uh, kudos to Tara and Wilson Similio, who's kind of the I don't know his exact title. He's social media and marketing and all kinds of stuff for uh, for Galaxy, but uh, the production and graphics and everything on these streams are just extraordinary as far as I'm concerned. And um, hopefully all of y'all are really enjoying this. Okay, Chris can get one headed in that direction. Just a. That's probably right. Or do you, you certainly put two to the five. Do you play one, uh, five, three after that and keep an even number on the five point? 
three ones. Four two, so he's gonna play to the three. Oh, yeah, there was a stack there, so he was even on the back. I didn't realize there was a stack checker. Five one, so here we are looking. Uh, you know, Chris has crunched a little bit, so it's gonna be even if he gets a shot, it's gonna be hard to. If he gets a shot and hits it, it's gonna be hard for him to. Uh, to win this game with the five and six open over there. Four one. Always hate it, and he had no choice here, but I always. I always hate to leave a position where I can double blot, but uh, he had no choice. Nah. Okay, we're back to gap and hope again. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Boom, that's a miss. So now, Chris has five, six crossovers to get one off. Take the two crossovers, I think. He's generally a favor to to save this. Now he's going to back that up, but this this is a critical a critical play, and that's why Chris knows that, and that's why Chris is uh, putting some serious thought into it, looking at all the various permutations. He should beat it, but certainly if if Lawrence were to Get a functional set in here somewhere. Um, he might get a G out of this. Six two. Okay. Two. Uh oh. Uh, that's crazy. Slot to the five. Or he can play in, but if he, he moves it closer, he can't play fives. Fives doesn't get him off. But by moving the one pip closer, he probably picks up more numbers, more other numbers that do get him off. Okay. Boom. Three, five. That'll work. Okay. Thirteen to nine. Well, you may be right, Scott. Chris took one break earlier after, uh, I forget the exact uh, situation, but had kind of some misfortune, took a break, and uh, came back for three or four games, and everything was going his way, and now we've slipped back into the, uh, into the uh, Lawrence Advantage mode. Four, two, and five, five, Reese says. 
Thank you for doing the transcription that you are, Reese. Or Chris will not be happy with that PR. But again, I guess uh, if, in fact, that report we got on that first game, if that was a, what was it, 280 or 380 drop, um, that really bloated his PR right out of the gate. And he's he's carved it down a lot, but he's still trying to recover from that. Okay, four away, eight away. Kind of the uh, the big brother of the two way, four way situation that we're all familiar with, but. Uh, I don't think there's much opportunity that uh, Lawrence Powell is going to let any really large crooked numbers come into play, meaning it's going to be very unlikely he would uh, initiate a cube. Mr. Simpor, did you win or lose? I lost the DMP to Karen Davis. Uh-oh. I'm proud of it. It was a great match. Very good, sir. Ho ho. Okay, babe. That has, was Phil Simborg who stepped up behind me. He uh, lost a match to Karen Davis here tonight. Okay. Chris lets that go. Fourteen nine Lawrence Powell. Okay, Chris has got to uh I like that. Too powerful. Chris is gonna have to uh Make something happen here. Doesn't have uh, much room to uh, give up many more points. Yeah, both these guys are undefeated, so the loser goes to second chance and still has an opportunity to win the world championship. Now, conversely, on that, that stream one match right now where Petco and Mick Larson are playing, and I don't know, maybe GL can give me an update. Uh, Losers out as far as the uh, world championship goes. Yeah, I'm with you, Justin. That seemed like, and, and I was distracted talking to Phil and doing a few other things, but that seemed like a pretty uh, quick drop on what I thought was a much closer consideration, particularly at score. Any matches have finished of the non-losers? I don't know. The brackets are, um, are across the room from where we're at, so uh, I can't tell you. Obviously, one has still lost to Karen Davis. Petco down eight seven so that's a a nice tight match and of course that's just two 11 points so uh so they're coming down the home stretch oh 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 pardon me I don't know. I'm I'm kind of with the run crowd 
Okay, thanks for that update on viewers too, uh, GL. I, I suspected, and and that's uh, you know maybe stream one naturally gets more viewers just being stream one. But we uh, we put Petco Mick there, thinking that that would be a more appealing match to a wider audience. Truthfully, no, uh, you know, no slide intended to Lawrence or or Chris. They're both great players, and they are in the undefeated bracket. Where Mick and Petco are in the second chance bracket, but we just thought that this would uh, how you can apply. To this competition in the future, all you got to do is show up and pay some money, T Boar, and you are in. No, uh, no qualification required. So uh, it's kind of interesting. But Chris is really playing around with this, and and they both have tons of time comparatively. But Chris is really working this five three over from a consideration perspective. Personally, I'm running, but um, I don't know. Okay. He's hesitant to give up that anchor. Gives the uh, double outside shot. Now, he is going to run. And now Chris has no uh, no choice but to attack. Yes, as we anticipated. Eleven, eight, six, one. Careful with the spelling of that, Andrew. Huh? Or maybe that was a uh, auto spell uh, correction there. <laughs> okay, so uh, what goes? Chris is uh, contemplating. He got his he got an itchy trigger finger at this deficit, uh, and uh, there he had his finger on the trigger. It was itchy, then it was on the trigger, and now he has pulled it. Fourteen ten. Lawrence, three away, seven away for those who prefer that. A masturbator. That's what I was saying. I think uh, Andrew Baggam in London had to uh, maybe be wary of uh, autocorrect on spelling and so forth. People are uh, in the world championship this year with 207 entrants. If the winner is also in the side pool, the combined uh, winnings to them is about eighty thousand dollars. Your choice of hookers. Well, I tell you, we all get. Uh, from early in the evening into dawn the next morning, there's a, a parade here to uh, to look at. So, uh, and uh, we're certainly dressed to the T and look the part. So, whatever turns you on.
Uh oh. Two point and three point. Wow, that'll help. An ace, an ace, and make the, well, I think you make the, the bar, but. Yeah, you, you can't, uh, you can't hit and take the chance of another checker getting sent back to that against that best five-point board, you were fortunate to roll an ace. Uh, I think my set ace is there, actually. Okay. Now, Chris has the opportunity to uh, to go to work here. A number of good rolls. He'd like a six. He'd like a real six, not a combo six. So now what? Hmm, I don't know. I Oh. You could just go for the gusto and uh hit two. Um you know, you're gonna be attacked if he rolls a five or a seven on this side. Um I don't know. Chris is not going to take the bait of hitting anything into that exchange. There's a 5-1. As I said, he, he had to know he was going to be attacked if, uh, if possible. Whoa, what a shake. Let's see a little smile. Chris was looking pretty glum before that roll, but, uh, so now, now, I think, uh, does he ship it? <clears throat> It'd be interesting. I, I, I think if he ships it, Lawrence is going to drop it. So it's more of a question, from my perspective, does Chris play on? I, I, I don't know. I think he cashes it. Uh, you know, there's some risk at any point in the short term to, to leave a plot, and you just, you just can't risk getting hit. 3-1, so he's going to leave a shot somewhere, albeit indirect. Four one, there's the anchor, forward anchor. But now it's such that uh you know, Lawrence is, Lawrence is, uh, if he were to roll, well, a six is blocked, but three, four, five. Okay, Chris is, I'm tired of fooling with this. You got to, you got to pay to play here. Pay to see the roll. You know, Lawrence is, uh, you know, in problem or in danger of cracking his home board and or being forced to play off of the uh, off of the 20 which then uh, 
you know, allows Chris to perhaps attack that spot. So th this is going to be a fun one. See what happens. That's going to the uh, to the six, I think. He cannot afford to get hit indirect or any other fashion. I'm kind of with the Justin. Justin's calling it a big pass. I thought it was pass. Um, I don't know if that's uh, if Justin's running it or if that's just his uh, evaluation, personal evaluation. 150 blunder. Again, I suspect by an even number like that, that's a guesstimation. But I, I thought it was a big pass. Two six from the bar. Okay. Four two. Just he's got to play safe against that. Just totally safe against that best five point board. No, I think you had it right the first time, Chris. There you go. Five one. He's got to go on. Chris would like to get that two point. What is that? Aces. Well, you're going to take the eight point and then uh, eight seven, I guess. Two one, a nice small number treading water for, uh, for, uh, uh oh, uh oh. Okay, I understand the other match is over. Um, who won that, GL? Okay, that's an ugly 6-3 double blotter. I mean, that's about as bad as you get. That's forced. That's uh, all but forced. So, nothing you can do about it. Just, uh, just make the play and hit the clock. Whoa, and he misses it. A direct miss. Had ones and threes, and he misses. Nice. Uh, okay. Now, Chris is... Uh, yes, he just prepares to clear. Got to clear sooner or later. Nichols... One, two, three, four. Okay. Six, one. Six, one. Nickels. So that'll play. Chris trying to get back in this match. 5-2, he can handle that one. Six two. Nichols. Okay, here's uh Six four, nice roll. Okay. Congratulations to Mick Larson. Condolences to my buddy uh 
Petco it won't make it to the final for a would it be a third time? Um, certainly disappointing uh, for Petco. But Mick is a superb player. While I'm at it, hello, uh, hello to Neil. Glad to have you watching here. Got some great streams, great matches going on. Okay, so a single single game two point here, fourteen twelve. So uh, Chris is uh, climbing back into the game. Tell that that match is over. There's a lot of viewers are. Locking over to this one now. I hate when work gets in the way of good backgammon, Ian. hits who we have back there with him that's Peter Hallberg who's a former world champion and let me turn around I don't recognize the, the third guy there I've seen him, but I don't know his name. Nice shake by, uh, yeah. Okay, Chris has got to hit the blot. Aces for Chris, so that's kind of an awkward. I guess he's going to take three to the uh, seven and one on to the six. Okay. Orange gets his aces. Plays a bit better. I have one for Chris. All he can do. Apparently, uh, our viewership has gone up considerably, I think, as a number of uh, people have switched over from stream one to stream two, and we welcome you to a, uh, a good, exciting, close match here. Lawrence Powell of the UK is... Uh, Leading three away, five away against Chris Trencher from the Estates. Just a tad, Neil. How many games are usually a match? Say in this 17 point match, obviously it can vary a lot if there's some big cubes in play but they'll probably on average play as many games as there are points
Yeah, the peanut gallery was kind of entertaining in Chicago, Scott. Had to be there. Can't really volunteer. That's that's a little rich. High high risk, high reward. Get so where does oh that's Tara playing with that T V behind me. I was getting feedback. <laughs> okay. No problem. Um, so anyway, Chris made a, a big play there. Got away with it with that double deuce from uh, from Lawrence. He has one to come in with. I guess he just makes the deuce point. And it's kind of interesting. I get... Uh, get to hear myself with a delay and it's rather uh, rather disconsulting or disconcerting Chris is going to push the envelope a bit here trailing hmm? out or get me some earplugs or something <laughs> but uh Okay, so they turned it off behind me. If they want to hear my commentary, the few that are standing there, they can walk over here close to this monitor. But uh, this is an interesting, uh, interesting cue by what's the. Uh, Reese says it's a big drop. Neil says it's a must cube. Um, I think I agree with uh, both perspectives there. This is a uh, pretty rich environment for Chris. Uh, Lawrence, he's been, particularly in these cube decisions, he's been uh, seemingly extremely thorough and deliberative, uh, contemplating all the probable sequences that may come into play, taking into account the score considerations. Um, you know, I thought going into this match that uh, that uh, Chris would be would play at the more brisk pace and that Lawrence would uh, perhaps be more deliberately or deliberate. And we see here that uh, they started with 34. So Chris has played, uh, used 25 minutes and Lawrence has used 17 and a half. So it's kind of the reverse in that regard that I'd anticipated, but neither are in any kind of time trouble really at all. Well, he takes this. This is interesting to me. And uh, Chris is going to be pedal to the metal here. Nice 3 2. So he can just play this safe for the moment. Right. No sense uh, getting rash. 3 4. He can safety that. Play to the 4. Now Chris has just got to. Clean up a little bit here. Six four goes to the four. Could go to the three. Or that's the three, and it could go to the deuce. I don't know that Chris is moody so much over the board, but he he, he does have a very expressive face. And uh both in Physical expression, I think, and in um, 
facial coloration. I, I don't know uh, what that's indicative of or what causes or anything else. So it gives, I think he's less emotional than uh, what he might seem, but he does, uh, he is very facially expressive, if that's a correct term. Okay, three one. I think I'm, yeah, I'm going to save, I'm going to certainly save a six. I might play six to two rather than give up the point. But, uh, uh, six, seven, three. I don't like that. I, I'd play six, two, but that's me. Neil can tell us what's right. Six, four. That's what I was a bit afraid of and was fixing to mention that, it, you know, Lawrence has the potential to get that, uh, that extra, that spare from the 20 point around. And then he buys some timing. Two one. So Chris is, uh, yeah, he's trying to save a couple of high numbers. It's it's uh, Chris is getting presented some uh, difficult decisions here. Now, were I Lawrence? What did I do? I think I played. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna not bring it in, that's for sure. Five three. So Chris is still treading water a little bit here. He he, he can't even think about you know paying now because it's a double blotter, so he's just gonna have to do this and get hope he gets lucky next roll. Four two and he's going to go 6-4. So here's the, the key roll. Small or a doublet? Doublet. Small doublet. And the best of both worlds. Not out of the woods yet, but he, he's certainly closer to the edge of the, of the woods. <laughs> uh, that'll work, but it's a blot. Okay. G's are out. So we're going to play another game. So, uh, okay, so Chris is going to bring this home, and there's still a limited chance of a, of a gammon here. Take three off. Lawrence should beat it, but he's not, uh, not Jen to beat it just yet. Getting increasingly closer to that. That doesn't help. So Chris has seven checkers. Probably going to be a two-point uh, two-point game. That's not his best number. Three. You can go to the seven. Make sure you got an ace to play. Little do I know. Lawrence says I'll do it the other way. Six four. I have checkers, so he's still two rolls away. That solves the problem. And here we are, three-point match. Well, we picked up a, a lot of viewers. I assume many of them coming from Stream 1, where uh, Mick Larson dispatched Pet Coco Stud enough. Um, be sure and hit that like button, folks great with uh, search engine prioritization for backgammon it's good for backgammon galaxy's YouTube status 
more likes you get, the more perks you get, in a sense. So, uh, okay, Neil's uh, sharing with us the the peculiarities and intricacies of this score. So, Mr. Homke, Andres Homke, coming up behind me. So, uh, Neil, Neil suggesting uh, three to the 11 and stepping up to the 22. I think he stepping up has definitely got to be part of the part of the equation. And ah, oh, he goes, uh, he hits loose on the five point. There's a uh, five the hard way. Hey, Phil. Watching that thing. Last cube was a drop. No lie. That's uh, that's on. You want to? Yeah. <laughs> well, we got some pretty high priced. Uh, we got Tim Cross, Neil Kazaros, Justin Knoll, and others, and, and they were thinking it was a pass as well. Yeah, so uh, as of today, we convinced Mark to go live with with Stream 2. We'd been lobbying for it for days, and R and I finally convinced him. Based on viewing numbers overnight of the delayed broadcast, they just weren't good. So uh, both matches are live now. So uh, when... Oh really? <laughs> no, no, uh, no bias here, huh? No. Tara, <laughs> saying Phil's mic's not on. I thought. I, oh, I didn't turn it on. Hell, I thought I touched it and it went on. I'm sorry. I think you did that on purpose. Thank you. Uh, I think you did that on purpose, Billy. You thank you, Edward. Keep, keep me from having my mic on. <laughs> People do that all the time. I wish they had a mute button for me. Yeah, they can. Y'all can hear him now, I presume. Unfortunately, they said they could. Yeah. I was saying I shouldn't be doing this because Chris is my roommate, and I'd be rooting for him a little too yeah. much here. But all the experts watching thought it was a pass. That last. Yeah, week. as did the experts here. So okay. that was uh, all right. Azaros, uh, no. Mm -hmm. I see where Tim Tim Cross has joined the room now, as well. So I uh, got a got a great crowd in here. Mm hmm. It's better than having XG to have those guys on. Yeah, I I, you know, you get some uh, some varying perspective where XG is this is it right, and uh, here you have. You know, everyone's got a different perspective, yeah. and it's interesting to hear those different opinions. I like that last play he just made, leaving the shot there with the two blots, give him more flexibility and tease him a little bit. I love teasing. Yeah, kind of sticking some bait out yeah, there. Yeah, right. And he didn't bite. He had a chance to. And play to the ace or shift? You know, shift that's another reason for leaving three. it out yeah. there to make that point, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, we got this, uh, and we've had a number of these, and, and that's true with backgammon all the time, but particularly in this match, we've had a lot of these standoff games, stripped standoff games, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, mm -hmm. I call them spy versus spy games. 
Whoever blinks first makes the first exactly. mistake loses. I, I use that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, or who, whoever, whoever blinks first. Right. You sit there and hope you roll doubles before your opponent and don't make a mistake. Or hope your timing holds up longer than his does. Yeah. Well, I guess you go to the ace point. There's some argument to clear the six. Whoever start answer is says, hi, Sensei Simborg. <laughs> <laughs> Probably somebody I owe money to. <laughs> you know, somebody fooled. Bill is the man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where are we here? They're this I mean, a this presents a, <laughs> a lot of difficult oh, yeah. evaluations and considerations. See, the first thing I look at is duplication. It's a two to cover and a two to hit. Mm. That, that forces the play, and I think it's the right play for that reason. Although you'd like to clear from the back, but you couldn't here. <clears throat> Scott Johnson says hi, Phil. Oh, Scotty, my old friend from Indianapolis. Well, what's going on here? I can't th can't believe he would double here because of the open six point, the blood on the six point, and the twos are duplicated. I I just can't I can't, I just don't see a double here. People should know the take points twenty five. Oh, you see Ooh, double here. twos. He absolutely should have doubled here. There's no question in my mind. Oh, well, was it somebody, <laughs> any number of people, that, you know, duplication only enhances jokers, right? Yeah. I think that's Neil Kazaros's quote. Duplication is a strategy designed to give your opponent jokers. Double twos. Wow, that has to hurt. That leaves a mark. And unless... Uh well, Chris could, can get back into this game with a quick ace, but absent of that, he, he, yeah, uh, it's, he's it's looking not, at a he's looking at a right. G perhaps. It's not him. just about how many gamins there are and how many wins. It's how many market gainers there are on the next roll, and there just aren't enough. There's the ace, right. but it's an ace four. Ace four. Does he? Does he give up the board? He, I think he has to give up the board. Let's, yeah, because it, it's he can't just do. A, it's just and it so enhances the gammons if you offer up another checker yeah if you were if you could dupe twos here i guess you would leave the outside shot but i would give up the board here now the question is does he cube him out or does he neil play says on? play on yeah, neil says play on then that's my Ian bet. terry says massive play on massive play on okay especially if he breaks his board or leaves another shot which he's got to do now, I haven't heard from Reese Mack for a while. He was transcribing. I'm just uh -huh. curious, Reese, if you're still at it and yeah. listening. Uh, how these guys play, and I know it, it wasn't the, the the greatest of game for, for either early on. Look at here. All right. So Reese Hodges, I'm here's sorry. Here's my question. If Chris rolls a six here, Reese does he come Hodges, out? I apologize. If Chris rolls a six, does he come out? I don't. I think I stay. And then you get doubled out by staying. Well, he doesn't have to make the right. decision. It'd be an interesting situation, though, to see what you would do with a six. Well, he was you just able give to make up. it back. Justin Knoll in caps, though, is a yeah. never break your board. <laughs> so he was going to uh -huh. give him the... Give him the uh, Potential for the second checker. Yeah. Well, he left a direct shot instead, so that's it's a toughie. But if Justin says it, it's probably true. He's a lot smarter than he looks. <laughs> I don't play on here. You you wouldn't hit him loose. So if you're not going to hit him loose, you're you just don't have that many gammons. I would double. Yeah, double hope he takes. That's what you do. Yeah, because there's the, the rare yeah. gammon floating yeah. around him. They, Here in my shoe, they take these all the time. Uh-oh. See, he's not going to hit him loose. He didn't hit him loose he's, before. He, so yeah, he's, he's not going to hit him loose now. So if you're not going to hit him loose, which you could have done if his board was crashed, so that's why Justin was right about that. You would be hitting him loose now if the six point was open. 45 and 509 so PRs are pretty close but 
Chris is not going to be happy with that. I'm not sure what Lawrence is. Well, somebody said he plays three and a half to four, so he's not going to be happy with that yeah. either. Chris has been posting a lot of BRs under three lately. He's been playing. Chris is play, certainly amazing. capable of doing it. Now he, he did hit now him loose. He, hits he loose. did hit him loose. Wow. Now this is, you know, big risk, big reward. Oh, Boom. there it is. No. Oh. Okay, there he covers. I cover. I don't cover care what you deuce. say. I don't yeah. care what you say. I, I'm covering. Okay. All but perfect spares. A lot of people say and this he, is and just he got as good. this closed out yeah. without Chris making any further advancement of these back checkers. Yeah. Which keeps the the gammon potential higher than it would have been otherwise. No question. That took real guts to hit loose there, I think. Or a lot of respect for your opponent to go for that. Yep. See? Okay, so he, he's he hits loose, takes the big chance, three, and, doesn't, seven, and then doesn't win the gammon. That's it's, why, it's that's why I don't think I would have hit loose. It's pretty close. Yeah. You often don't win the gammon anyway, though. Wow. Well, yeah. Might need to roll a little larger than that, Chris. I don't think he's going to beat it, Phil. Yeah. Rolled, what, 2-1 and 4-1? Jonah. So what's the difference of his equity? He's got 25% equity if he's gammon, and he's got, what, 35 if he's not? Mm-hmm. According to the Kazaros. What's that? Match. 3 1 4 1 yeah. double ace. Yeah. So. Uh, and you don't have to tell Chris what he rolled. He knows damn well. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be dreaming of those numbers all night long. Worse than counting sheep, isn't it? No kidding. Counting little numbers. And remembering all your bad rolls. Okay. He can still save it, but it's highly unlikely. No. Well, he can't. You got to give Powell credit for playing on it and for taking the chance to hit loose. The guy had guts, and he's rewarded. Those are those, those okay. are gutsy. So here we are, Crawford three away. Yeah. So what inside? What you got here, Phil? Crawford three away. It, it's it's like DMP. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Gammons are only worth the, it. Just stops the free drop. So a gammon is only worth point oh two four. So you re, you play it like DMP. <clears throat> in DMP, you're supposed to try and win a race. Like you say, the the yeah. gammon really doesn't matter. That no, much. it just it just it, it only little. it only stops a free drop. So yeah, that's and a drop is the free drop is worth 0 0.024. So that's what the gammon is worth 0 0.024. So you don't worry about it. You just you don't worry about it till maybe the last roll or two if you can get it. You play the whole game like DMP from both sides. I'm sorry? Okay, crowd around. We don't care. TV tanked on us? What happened? Well, I'm see. Is that in anybody's way? Pull it out. Well, I'm slotting. I'm slotting because I'm losing the race. Or the race is can't. Yeah, I'm losing the race a little bit. I like that play a lot. I like the slot there. Gammons don't matter. Six four. Yeah. Yeah. He's. Uh... All right. That's good. At the point. Come to the eleven. Huh? I'm tempted to come up. I'm tempted to come well, up. Well, there you are. You, I, again, you know, you you may well be right. G's don't matter. G's don't matter. I don't want to be stuck on the three point. You don't coming down gives you a builder for the bar, but you got nothing else to make it with. If I had a spare on the eight point. I'd be more inclined to come down. I like this play. In fact, I love this play. I adore it.
2220 now while you can, Kazaros says. I think so, too. Before like he makes the five point or the. Yeah. Got Again, a if he had a, got spare, a lot of pointing. If he had a spare in the eight, I like one down because you might make the bar or something, but I love this play. Okay. Well, the four points part of the equation. Now, what does he do after that? Huh. I think you put three checkers on the four point. Let's say that that's definitely part of the equation. Yeah, you I, can you can debate what you do otherwise, I right? You, I but think, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you put another checker on the four point. I don't like. I don't up like coming point. off the yeah, mid because I mean, it just gives Chris too much free play. You lose outfield control, but it does put some pressure on there. It can. It might be right. Tim Cross says eleven points strong, so he likes that. Of course, they're both Brits, and that might be the Brit style. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Ever tried their food? They have no taste. <laughs> Where are you at, Tim Cross? I thought I'd see you here in Monte Carlo. By the way, cover and hit. Uh, oh uh, yeah. Now, Chris has to respond right here. He does. He does. He does. The anchors. Now, do you play to the? 12? Um, yeah, if you don't care about gammons, why don't you play the 12? And it gives you a little more it gives coverage. a lot more coverage, a lot more ways to make the bar or make the 9-point. Yeah, good play. You might not make that play at gammon. You wouldn't make that play at gammon save. Okay. Let's go to the 4, I guess, huh? What else? I don't want to stack them, yeah. so I just go to the 4. What up? Nothing else. There's Eric Peterson. He's too lazy to come down and watch in the room. In the playing room, he's watching in his room upstairs. Mm -hmm. and there's a cute blonde <laughs> in this room sitting here. Yeah, that well, Eric, that's, that's Eric point, Peterson you know? might be missing. <laughs> are there also professional female players? There are few female players here at the tournament that are quite good. How about Akiko, two-time world champion? Absolutely. Karen Davis, who just beat me at DMP. You think that's a high point on her resume? Yeah, absolutely. She rolled a 1-6 <laughs> for the bar to beat me. You know? How about uh, the high point on Akiko's resume? I beat her in the first round. It that's did. true. Yeah. You did. In this tournament. I, felt, I almost felt bad. Almost. Almost. Tight game. Very tight. Now, this is interesting. Oh, what do you do? I make the ace point. I don't know. I, I make the ace point. It's okay. A it's a timing thing. Fair enough. I got to have it sooner or later. Yeah, I anyway. thought Chris that move. Okay, this is interesting. Does he run? Uh yes, he's up in the race. Attack mode for Chris. Yeah, if he has the opportunity. He hits. Up in the race, you race. Where's the two? I guess it comes down. You don't want to break your eight point. That eight point's valuable right now. I'd like to get the other builder, but I yeah. I, in case he comes come with in, in with yep. a two, you help sure. to block the six. Sure. Da da. Okay. Now. Mm. It's okay. I like that play. He rolls a five two it hits. Not that on five rolls two would also cover. It dupes the five two up right, here. It covers. Right. I like I like this play. Time to perform, Chris. Roll the five two and let's see what you do. It's uh, it almost has to be two in, doesn't it? Two in or, or do you and I think you do. But you could hit it too. I don't. I I think you got to just bring both in from the eight point. Yeah, you got pretty good coverage with the two outfield blots. I mean, just I, it's it's not a matter of that. It's a matter of what, you know the alternatives are all pretty bad.
I mean, hitting off the two, you give up your chance to make the four point. Even if he doesn't hit you now, you don't, you know, you got, you're on the two point. I, I just don't see that as a logical. There you go. That's the play. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Good. I think Phil's right. The only thing and again. You know, yeah, that's the uh, the other option. I, I hate this play. Neil likes the four point. I hate this play. The only thing against I have a yeah. Okay, that's okay. my Okay, probably right. All right, low mm. numbers really helps here. That certainly helps. Really helps Chris. So that goes to the deuce. Huh? Yep, yeah. nothing else he can do. Okay, now he'll certainly hit it now. Certainly hits it now. 6-5 hits. Six, yep. Well, with the blot, you know, you have to hit. Have to hit. You have to hit. There's just too much else going and on. Got, you perhaps have a return if you get hit. Yeah. He's afraid of getting stuck in there is what he's thinking about, but you got to hit. Okay. No dice on a checker in this tournament. Boom. Okay. Fours and nines. Not 11, so he's got to start out. Come to the five with the six. Yep. Give yourself two yep. builders. Okay. Big roll of the match right here. All Ooh, right. Okay. That's huge. And now That's he's huge. a big favorite to cover. And there come out. Is. And That's come it. out. Perfect roll. And, and again, gammons don't matter here, so he just needs to play. So, uh, he just needs to play to not leave a shot now. Okay, so we're going to, in all likelihood, have one more game. Yeah. So here's a very interesting thing that came up in my match with Karen. They don't play legal moves here. Correct. And Karen rolled the number, moved her checkers in a, in a race, and then doubled me when it, when <laughs> on her own turn. That's her second time of doing that yeah. that I know of this so, week. So here's the question. Do, in a non-legal move game, can I accept that double? Or I think what I can do is I can just, I can just wait till my roll and see if I want to accept it or not. I think that's how it would work. Although well, it used, it's right. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it used to be in the States. That's the way it sure. should be, yeah. Right. I, I just wait and see how I roll. And then, because she, she has to give that cube then. She did that to Manny Ozinko. Yeah, to Manny. And she would count the pips, and then she got confused, and she doubled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we were playing legal moves, so there was no problem. I just told her she can't double. Yeah. And the next move, I rolled a high number. She didn't double. She didn't get penalized for it. Okay, so he, needs to, uh, he needs to. He wants to dance here because gamma yeah, don't matter. He has a get a shot to, if he chance two to high get a numbers, shot. Two high numbers. Boom, right. No. Okay, so it looks like Chris will win this yeah. game, and we go to the what should be a last game. Yeah. Well, not with a free drop. With a free drop, is a fifty-fifty that it'll be the last game. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Steve Sachs brought that brought up the idea. A back there is back M equity. But with one checker back, I usually don't think about that a lot. Nor I. I mean, <laughs> but Steve Sachs does. Steve Sachs does. Yeah. That's why he doesn't sleep. Neil's BG would be sick. And it would have been. It would have been very sick. It, it would have been sick and Lawrence Al would have been sicker. It would have been sick, but it's happened to all of us. It's happened. Okay, now he's got a free drop. For those no, no, of no, no, you. no. He got oh, a G there. He got a G. That's right. No free drop. Okay, so yeah. this is it, baby. DMP. And DMP, you're just supposed okay. to race and look, you're not well. Oh, there's a great roll. The last game, so you. Uh, is that right? Would, you don't make two points there? No, I, I would. Right? I mean, that would be. Just wow! Seems unnatural. I just can't believe you don't make two points. It unstacks the hell out of your six point. <laughs> wow! And hit now, all you uh, three hundred viewers we got here. Be sure and hit that like button before this uh, this broadcast wow. ends. I got to look at that double five. Man, Neil or Ian says that five five's right. Yeah, but it's, I, I think but it's Ian. It's Ian. He's an actor. He's not a backgammon player. Ian. No, Ian's very good. I'm kidding. <laughs> Busting his chops. He's very well, that's good. That's the thing. I enjoy having fun with the commentating, <laughs> particularly when it's live and we can interact with <laughs> the oh, crowd. Sure. You know. 
the problem that I have is that lots of times when I'm serious, people think I'm joking because it's so stupid. I, I really don't appreciate You think that. any viewer hasn't heard that line before, <laughs> Phil? <laughs> You're going to have to work on some there's, new material. There's one new viewer there. <laughs> okay. This is it. Well, the five and comes the, down. Uh, Right. Now, the, the loser is not eliminated from the possibility of uh, winning the tournament, but it becomes a lot longer and harder road. Yeah. Does but, everybody uh, know they changed the rules? If you get I the have finals, explained you have a couple of three times Good. tonight. Now, we Good. have many I more viewers now. Uh, you don't have to win twice if you come to the You only have to win back. once. Yeah. Um, the way they've been doing it now, they... For years. And they, uh, but the winner of the undefeated bracket gets eight thousand euros, so he gets a, a, bonus gets a bonus to, uh, yeah, to, which I don't in even, recognition of that. I don't even think that's necessary. I think it's because the other guys want so many more matches to get right. there. But if they want to do it, that's fine. At least, at least the finals would be a lot more exciting now. Well, you know, it's the final. It's yeah. It's right. not the. Maybe yeah. it's the final. You know. Yeah. So it's uh, it's the final. All the viewers, everyone knows it. This is yeah. it. Okay. It's probably not going to be a problem, but Chris is down to 218. Lawrence has a whole lot of time. No, the problem is that Chris has three checkers back. He's more concerned about that than the clock. Right. I mean, he's um, in a little trouble right now. Okay. Five That's not a very good deuce. roll. Even if Chris hits, it has to be an indirect. Only double fours would hit Do and both. cover. Yeah, yeah, hit and cover. Six five. Yeah, I, I would, make the ace point on it. I would I think wanna... Chris is in trouble here. He's going to clear the mid. Wow. Okay. So he's just going to. Uh, he's going to pray, eat, pray, love. He's uh, All right. You got a couple combinations here. Oh, oh. that's his worst. Worst number. This is worse. So much for any timing and yeah. Although he's killed sixes now. Yeah. See, the one who comes from behind is supposed to lose because that's crueler, and backgammon is the cruelest game. That's how it works. <laughs> the entire Chris has garbage coming out of his gut. <laughs> no, this is true. Come from come from behind. It just gives you hope, makes you think you have a chance after you were down, and then punches you right in the gut. That's backgammon. What we love about it. I lift the blot. I'm sorry. There's very little timing. Yeah, don't give him anything. You get hit right now, and uh, he could re easily get back don't, in this game. Don't give him anything. Yeah, I lift the blot. He's played the five already, hasn't he? He's been but, playing with it so much. I've, I think he I've, played the five. I've He's got, got the three left, and I would lift, even though it's a stack. Double fours and three four my hits. Buddy, my buddy Barack you know. Kulhachi wants to play six three. Boy, Barack is a one hell of a player, probably within one of the top two players in Turkey. He's one of the top of the Centel. There's Ali Seaton Berlin. Ali Seaton uh, Berlin. Mete, Mete, Mete Topolo. Uh, there's uh, 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 Ginyet, I think is how you pronounce his name. There's a lot of great players in there's Turkey. Some. Oh, and what about. Uh, Everyone in Turkey plays. Oh, yeah. Right? They're, they're all good. And we're forgetting how he comes to the United States all the time. Really, the really nice guy that I, that I love. Azaros likes mm -hmm. Barak play, 6'3. He's got eight minutes on the clock, and he's right to take his time. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not? You can't take it home with you. Just to make sure you consider every aspect of this. Well, okay, so if you play 6-3 and he rolls the double four or the 4-3, he's still got two checkers back, but he's got another blot in the outfield. He could, and I don't like and he's got a return. I'm sorry. I'm lifting. I'm I'm going to play. And double chicken. four is super joker. He hits two with the double four. Yeah, I'm 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 going 
I'm going to chicken on this play and go to the six. That's why I'm sitting here instead of playing, though, probably. <laughs> and I'm not known to be a chicken. I take chances, but I don't like this chance. Although, you sure you get a lot more flexibility. No, well, actually, well, the checker to the two only helps you. Only Well, yeah, it still helps you make all your points because you still keep that builder for the yeah. five point. <laughs> Too many heroes in the graveyard for Phil. <laughs> Albert Schweitzer said happiness is good health and a bad memory. And uh, most of us in back of and remember all the bad beats and all the... Every time you leave that Everybody shot, you know you get hit. Played. Everybody's saying nine four six three, so he hasn't played the final. I wanted six three. That's what I. That was my play. Nine four six three. I just don't think it's worth. Yeah, the extra. while he's sitting on pondering this for three or four minutes now, let me just uh, say: be sure to hit the like button. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow, ten or not ten, two p.m. and ten p.m. here in Monte Carlo. Yeah. Round five of the uh, uh -huh. undefeated. So we'll have rounds at 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. And uh, we'll have some double mat doubles uh, starts in in between that. So we'll uh, mm -hmm. we we streamed a doubles match at yeah. 530 day. And fun. I'll either be doing commentary or paint playing pineapple bluff gaming with Akiko. <laughs> She needs the money because she lost in the tournament, so she needs it. She, yeah, she's been a, calling me. Just a three to play for sure. Whenever she needs now, money, she you calls know, I'm me. I'm not faulting you. you. You have the time, like you say, use the yeah, time. Yeah, use you it. Know? You know this but is the last game. about, what, four or five minutes yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's okay. Why not? I remember in Chicago four or five years ago, I watched it. Was, oh, look, Chris is playing solitaire on his phone. <laughs> it's XG Mobile. <laughs> XG Mobile? <laughs> Actually, we have now the... Uh, it went live Monday. What's today? Wednesday? Yeah. Went live Monday. Galaxy? The Galaxy mobile app. Wow. I got to get that. Galaxy mobile app. I think that's a great idea. For iPhones. That's a great idea. I got to get that. I mean, I need more ways to waste yeah. time. Like I say, be sure tomorrow, what, 2 p.m., 10 p.m., probably a double smash at 5.30. The super jackpot doesn't start until Friday uh -huh. afternoon late. So, uh, anyway, and uh, I'd like to thank everyone that's tuned in and viewed these great matches today. Oh, Keen Marin's in the house now, too. Hey, Keen, what's going on? Oh, whoa, that's a... Uh, whoa, Dara, what the he came hell? back, he came back. Wow, he left more than that. Look yeah, at this. Scared me for a second. Oh. He played it super, super big. Super, super big. And look, he's rewarded by getting nothing. That's backgammon. But he's got them all in. Yeah, but. But as I said, to make the five people point. have mocked me today, yeah. but I let, where there's a gap, there's hope. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let's see. But Chris, oh, um, that hurts. He rolled a double six and a double five. That yeah. hurt. Yeah. Lost his timing completely. Never get them when you want them. Oh, here's a shot, though. This, though. Here's a shot. Here's a shot. Chris has a four-point board, so it's not totally yeah. over. There's some jokers here. Ace and out. Oh. oh. Well, that's at least he can they keep his board with that roll. Uh, Chris, game-winning chances. I would say they're almost identical to his match-winning chances. <laughs> His game winning chances now just went down to about. Oh, man. He's I'd say. Three, less three, than five? I, yeah, oh, yeah. About 4%. On three, 4%. It just went up to 3.5%. Look at huh. Go to the six. I bring them all in. Yeah, of course. Ah, five checkers on the six point is the only good news. Six around, go to the ace. Go around. 
Six around and go six to the eighth. Six around and go to the eighth. Save a six. Yeah. Just save a couple pips. No, no, don't. What's the logic of that? What is the logic of that? He can't. He can't be thinking about running. No, I, I there's, absolutely cannot. No, there's no logic in running now. He can get pointed out. He can get pick and pass. You stay there and just play Neil outside. Says, don't run yet. Keen says run now. <laughs> I'm going with Neil. Yeah, you know, Keen drinks a little more right now than than Neil. So that's they named a, Scotch after him. Yeah, they named Scotch after him. But why do you do this? I, I, what is I the logic of that? I don't understand that. What was the we'll logic? Have to ask Chris. Okay. No, fine. don't don't ask him if he wins, not if he loses. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> ask him tomorrow. Ask him tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that was right. I'm not sure you don't go to the four point, the three point rather. Well, he wouldn't have been leaving this role anyway. But, yeah, uh, but still, why would you do it? I, I, I'm with you. Huh. <laughs> Who hopes? No, and Bob. <laughs> oh, this is unfortunate. Well, I think you should be consistent and run. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I mean, that would be consistent. Chris is, uh, Chris is, uh, resigned to his fate, looks like. But, you know, it is backgammon. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think it's important to think about what you're going to do for dinner. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm thinking of in this situation. Why, why is he doing this? He thinks he's going to win a race. Oh, 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 what the hell? I'm, I'm, I'm. He's, 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 he's thinking. If I get the shot, it doesn't matter anyway. So I got to roll double six or six times and win that way. He thinks he's well, more and, likely and to what, win a race. Black got him with sixes and yeah. fives earlier, right? Yeah, he so. thinks he's more likely to win with a race than getting a shot and winning from there. And you know what? Curtains. Huh. Because if he gets a shot and hits it with a three-point board, your worst three-point oh. board, you, how are you going to win that way anyway? Well, uh, congratulations to, to both. Uh, special congratulations to Will Lawrence advancing in the undefeated bracket. Chris slides into second chance. He's not dead. He can still win. And it's progressive, deal. too, the second chance, uh, right? Is, is the it's second progressive, chance is, is yeah. progressive, so, so he, he goes in at a higher spot. Right. So uh, we thank all of y'all for viewing. Hope you enjoyed it. See you tomorrow. Uh, join us uh, or later today in certain rooms. Or later today in certain rooms, yeah. <laughs> 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. and doubles probably at uh, 5.30 p.m. So uh, hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Uh, tough see tough you later. lost. Uh, Bye -bye. You put up a great battle to keep, you get back in the game. Tough loss. Played very well. Double twos in the second place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh.